Let's take a few minutes today to talk about batteries. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Questions surrounding batteries is one of the first thing an operator may ask when they first get into working portable. What kind of battery do I need? What chemistry do I need? What size do I need? What name brand should I be looking at? There's a lot of different questions surrounding batteries. So I wanted to take just a few minutes today and see if we couldn't talk about that and help you guys that might have those same questions get a little bit of resolution. It is a bit tricky though when we start talking about batteries because every setup is different and as you'll see when we get to the whiteboard we can use the same radio and have two entirely different power requirements depending on how we're using that particular radio. Now first thing I want to say is uh, if you're looking for batteries in today 2023 definitely go with lithium iron phosphate batteries. There is no substitute. Uh, that is the latest technology. I have done a video in the past. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below because when you first look at them, you may think that they're more expensive, but actually in the long run, they are less expensive to purchase. Now, if you're on a budget, you can look at something like the Miati battery. The Miati batteries are what I call the Baofeng of batteries. It is sufficient to get by. Is it a name brand battery? Absolutely not. But I've been rocking this one for probably over two years now, and I've had zero issues out of it. If you're looking for a name brand battery, you can go with uh, Dakota Lithium or bio -Eno. Both of them make a great battery. But this is a little 3 amp hour here, and it's going to actually cost you more money than an 8 amp hour from Miati. So, uh, you have to, you know, determine what's best for your budget. Again, Balfang of battery or name brand. You have to be the judge on that. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you can test your equipment to find out exactly what it's going to consume on transmit and receive. So the best way to check your equipment is to actually hook it up and run a few tests to see how much your radio is going to draw on both receive and transmit. Now, for this particular example, I have chosen to use the ICOM 705, which is a QRP radio. You can see that uh, the radio sitting there in receive is drawing roughly 0.35 amps. Now, you will need to go ahead and put your radio in a mode that will give you a carrier. CW works well, RIDI works well, which is what I'm using for this example. I do have the power turned all the way up, so a full 10 watts out for the 705. And as I key that radio, you can see that my consumption rate jumps to 2.13 amps. Uh, and that's at full power for the 705. But you will need to check your radio to see exactly what it's going to draw. Now that you know how to test your equipment and figure out how much it's going to consume, let's jump over to the whiteboard and apply some math to figure out how long you can expect a battery to last. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples. For this and this demonstration, we're going to assume that the radio on receive draws one amp and on transmit we're going to say that it draws 20 amps that'll give us a couple of round numbers that we can work with through this demo now let's look at something like a poda activation so parks on the air we're going to be transmitting and receiving almost equally in this case so 50 percent of the time transmit and 50 percent of the time receive so let's take our transmit number of 20 amps, multiply that by 50%, and that gives us a TX of 10 amps. Okay, so we've got 10 amps that we're going to consume every hour on transmit. If we take 50% of the one amp, that's going to give us half an amp. So 0.5 amps there for receive. So we get a total of 10.5 amps of draw from the battery. So let's assume that we've got a 20 amp hour battery. We'll just go ahead and note that here. We would only get a couple of hours out of that particular battery. Now let's look at it 
differently though. Let's assume that uh, maybe we're doing a roundtable talk and we're only transmitting maybe 10% of the time. So this time it's going to be different because 90% of the time we will be receiving and 10% of the time we will be transmitting. So in this particular case, our transmit is only going to equal 2 amps and our receive will equal 0.9 amps. So in this case, the total draw on the battery per hour would be 2.9 amps. If we look at that same 20 amp hour battery again, you'll see that we're going to get about six or close to seven hours out of this battery before we run it dead under these set of circumstances. And this is why it's a little tricky to figure out exactly how much battery you need. And the best thing you can do is get out into the field and start testing it on your own. Now to complicate matters a bit more, remember when we were talking about the POTA activation, we said that we would be using 10.5 amps per hour. Both transmit and receive combined together gives us this consumption rate. And we had said that we had a 20 amp battery. So I had indicated that you'd only get about two hours out of this particular setup. However, what if you throw solar into the mix? Well, that's another equation that you have to account for. So let's assume in this particular case that I'm getting 10 amps off of the solar and that is steady. That'll never actually be the case in real life, but for this demonstration, we're going to assume that we're getting a steady 10 amps. Okay, so now we get roughly two hours uh, off of this battery if we're consuming 10.5 amps. But over that same two hour period, we've put 10 amps back into the battery each hour. So in this particular case, we're actually almost in a perfect loop where we are producing just about as much power as we're consuming. Under these circumstances, we could run almost indefinitely. Now, one more thing to keep in mind before we get off of the whiteboard, these numbers that I gave you in the beginning uh, the, the receive will be a pretty constant number. The transmit, though, can change. The only way you would possibly be able to draw 20 amps out of a radio is if you're using a 100-watt radio and you're using it in a digital mode. If you run a radio that's uh, 100 watts and you're doing single sideband, that is going to vary according to your speech. And you'll probably find that averages out somewhere around 9 or 10 amps, even though you're running that radio at 100 watts. So I hope this video helps you understand a little bit better about what you can expect from a battery using your equipment in the field. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.